All right, and welcome back. This is going to be the second video of chapter three and part two of covering learning objectives one and two, analyzing the effect of transactions on the accounting equation and explaining how accounts, debits, and credits are used to record transactions. If you'll recall, assets equal liabilities plus equity and revenues minus expenses equal profit or if negative, loss and equity equals common shares plus retained earnings, where retained earnings equals opening retained earnings plus profit minus loss minus dividends is equal to ending retained earnings. So an increase to profit equals an increase to retained earnings. This video is gonna focus on one practice problem. And if this is the first video you're coming to, I encourage you to go to the video uh, immediately preceding this one as it walks through exactly why we're about to do what we're doing. All right, time for some practice. Rico Limited has the following selected transactions listed out through one through eight. So for each of these transactions, I would like you to indicate the basic type of account debited or credited. So basic meaning, is it an asset, liability, shareholders, equity? And then the specific account debited or credited so is it going to be like cash or accounts receivable, etc.? Then does this increase or decrease that account balance? Please use the following format on the screen. Uh, so you'll see one side for account debited, A, what's the basic account, what's the specific account, and what is the effect. And then for the other side of the journal entry, for the amount credited, the same thing. What is the basic type asset? liability or equity, what's a specific account, and what is the effect, does it increase or decrease? I'm gonna give you a moment, uh, I consider pausing this video, and when you come back, we will go through the comprehensive uh, answer and talk through why each one of these transactions are recorded the way that they are. We'll talk to you soon. All right, welcome back. So if this text on the screen is a little bit small for you, uh, consider just rewinding like 30 seconds, taking a screen grab, and then, um, cause we're gonna be walking through these transactions just down below here. All right, so for the transaction number one, issue common shares to shareholders in exchange for $5,000. Okay, so what we did was we issued common shares. And so by issuing common shares, that means we're effectively the company is selling our shares, we're issuing them. So we're receiving cash. So the basic account type is asset and the specific account type is cash. If you notice, I'm just going through the one up here. And then the effect is gonna be that it increased, okay? And so in order to issue common shares, I sold or the company sold common shares. So the basic account is equity and then the specific account is gonna be common shares. Make you a little bit bigger. And the effect is that it increased. So the way that this would look like if we were doing debits and credits would be debit asset for $5,000. And we would be crediting, well, we probably move this over one. Okay, and then debit asset, pardon me, we would debit cash and we would credit common shares for the same $5,000. And then we would actually record um, a separate part to record issuance of shares. I can say common shares. So that is the journal entry. This is what we're doing here. Now, we're gonna go through the chart. I'm not gonna talk about journal entries anymore, but this is a video that you wanna come back to if you're like, hmm, Sam talked about this and I kind of get this or I'm working towards getting this, but then in the next chapter, Sam turned to journal entries and I no longer see um, you know, the increase or the decrease. Um, this is the process that connects um, capturing the transaction and then journalizing. Um, but with practice, you'll be able to skip right to the journalizing portion. All right, so let's do some more of that practice. Transaction number two, paid rent in advance for two months. All right, so rent in advance. All right, so I'm going to have an asset because I am attaining an asset. I have 
um, the future economic benefit of future rent. It's something that I can control. I prepaid, um, it's my rent, and it's for a transaction that occurred in the past. So this is gonna be prepaid rent expense, so, or just prepaid rent. And it increased, my assets increased from that. However, my assets also decreased because I took cash and I prepaid rent. So I also have a credit to an asset, which is cash, and it was a result of a decrease to cash. So I took cash and I prepaid rent. All right, number three. And again, if you have any questions, please, 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 I take a screen grab, put a question uh, anonymously in our discussion board, or you can put it right down below uh, in this video's chat. So whatever you would like. All right, we paid administrative assistant $500 salary. All right, so we paid a salary. So this is going to be part of our equity, because remember, our equity is where we have our retained earnings as a sub account, and a part of retained earnings is where our income statement articulates through. Again, go to chapter one's videos to look at the articulation of the income statement up until equity. So we have equity, which is really going to be our salary, salary expense from our income statement. And I may just go like this, let's see. IS for income statement, all right. And so that is going to increase because we Pardon me, um, while salary expense increased, that actually means our equity decreased. So, uh -huh. and then, so we have the salary expense that increased, which means that equity decreased. And then we actually paid the salary. And so that means that our asset of cash decreased because we have cash going out the door. All right. So you're doing great. Let's go into number four. Build clients $1,200 for services provided. All right, so that means that we did work for clients, but they haven't paid us yet, which means that we are gonna record the fact that we are expecting to receive accounts receivable in the future. So I'm gonna put AR for accounts receivable, and this is increase, okay? And that was for work that we performed, and so our, Service revenue is going to be increasing, and service revenue will roll up to be part of the equity account. All right. Um, and I know I said no more journal entries, but I just want to. Mm, I'll do. I'll do one more next. All right. Received nine hundred dollars in partial payment from clients for services provided in item four above. Oh, all right. So we did work for them here. And then they paid us, so thank you so much. Well, they paid us, which means that our cash is going to increase, and it also means that they paid us uh, for items that they owed us in the past, which means our accounts receivable is going to decrease. So if we were to say, what is the net effect on our financial statements? Uh, there would be no net effect to the financial statements. No net effect, sorry, I just kind of went off screen. Um, because our assets increased and our assets also decreased. But what is awesome here is would you rather people owe you money or the people pay you money? So there was a great economic event that happened for the company. Uh, they turned an IOU uh, into cash and cash is the lifeblood of an organization. So this is a very good thing. Smiley face for good thing. All right, we'll leave that there. Cash is awesome. Okay, moving on. Number six, purchased $500 of supplies on account. All right, so we purchased supplies. So our assets are gonna go up from those supplies. And how did we purchase those supplies? Well, we purchased those on account, which means we used an accounts payable, an AP, and that is an IOU that we owe somebody, a liability, and so that also increased. 
So while we increased our assets, yay, we got supplies. And we said, hey, we'll pay you back in the future, which means that we have something that was a result of a past transaction that represents a future oblig or pardon me, um, a current obligation that we can't get out of that will result in a future um, outflow of economic resources. So we have a liability, accounts payable. That also increases. All right. Oh, and now we paid that supplier on account. So that means that our liabilities liabilities are going to decrease I know debits and credits um, and because a liability is typically oh, pardon me a liability is in default a credit balance account in order to decrease it that's why we are debiting it so we're going to decrease our accounts payable because we paid part of it we paid some of it and then that means that we're going to credit our asset account of cash because we actually had cash going out um, because we we paid them. All right, one more. All right, number eight. Borrowed a thousand dollars from the bank to purchase equipment. All right, did we purchase equipment? No, we borrowed a thousand dollars with the intention to purchase equipment, but we haven't actually purchased the equipment yet. What have we done? Well, we borrowed the money. So that means that our cash is going to have increased because we got, um, how much? $1,000, awesome. But it means that our liabilities also increased um, bank loan because we borrowed money. Now, the moment that we actually take the money and go out and buy the equipment, then we'll have a different transaction. But for now, we used our, we um, took out a bank loan, which increased our liabilities, and we increased our cash throughout this. All right, so if we were to write that last transaction as a journal entry, what would that look like? Well, it would look like debit, cash, and I believe the amount was a thousand dollars. Cool. And we would credit the bank loan by the same amount, debits and credits always equal. And then, so we have accounts, amounts, they must be equal. And then we have the description uh, to record uh, cash received from bank loan. Cool. Accounts, amounts, description, the three parts of a journal entry. Alrighty. Well, how did you do? Did you get all eight or I suppose seven because one was already there? Did you get all eight partially correct? 100% correct? Did you get three correct? Did you get one correct? Um, and remember, I like right answers. Right answers are awesome. I love wrong answers, especially when you when you try and you have that focused effort and then you go and you say, oh, shoot, that's what I got wrong. That's why I got it wrong. And this is why it's right. That's learning. And that's what I love. So uh, embrace the struggle. Um, celebrate your success. Um, I'm really proud of you. I know this stuff isn't easy. Uh, we're getting into the thick of it. And then once we get through chapters three and four, then we'll dive a little bit deeper. So we're going to cover, continue covering a lot of the fun, fundamental foundation and just recognize, I know it's not easy, but my team and I are here for you. All right. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.